live on the Joy News channel on Multi TV. Welcome to the show that goes in depth into the lives of our reporters and the stories they bring to you. My name is Patricia Gasson. The program as Reporters Blog. Please stay. <laughs> Welcome back. He actually traveled and he's back here with us in studio. But God being so good, he's here safely with me. My colleague Justice Beatty joins me in studio. Welcome to Reporters Blog. Thank you for having me. How was the journey so far? Very How's well. the journey been? Very well, very well. <clears throat> we thank God um, because as you did indicate, we, we, we've gone virtually all around the country and did the same journey that um, ha where we the this week we yeah. re recorded um, one of our worst um, road accidents in, in recent history and so we will take the opportunity to wish um, the families of those who have departed yeah. um, our biggest condolences and also thank God that we did that journey and came back safely. Yeah, That's important. Yeah. Okay, so let's start from the very first story. Mm. Maybe let's say maternal mortality. But before you tackle that particular one, let's talk about the journey. I'm mm. interested in the journey, mm. how you got there, the people you spoke to, the things we did not see. Yeah. You've already packaged the story. Mm. It's nice and it's out there. But I want to see that. Tell us the things we did not see, the things you didn't. The ones you deleted <laughs> while <laughs> was editing. Right. So it's. I mean, it's always interesting to 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 go around um, and the things that we see. Um, are always exciting to, and it helps in, in, in telling the story. So we basically went back to Cape Three Point. Um, Wait, <laughs> I, 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 what is the secret behind this Cape Three Point? I love, I love this community. There. It's, I Come think, on, there are several I regions, think, but every time you, you um, want to delve into uh, Cape well, Three Point. I mean, I mean, I think that we all do have our biases, and I think that for me, um, my bias is it's, it's to communities that usually are neglected but really have so much um k3 point it has so much uniqueness that not so many communities so there are have. several stories in k3 exactly point. and i think that there's so much to be told from there so we went back to um because the first time i had i had been there i'd seen so many so many kids with um so many kids with um dread Locks. I love, so many, I love, I love yeah. dreadlocks. Yeah, so many. I mean, I, I, I'm, I, I'm thinking all, of we, doing some one day. Yeah, we all we all <laughs> love dreadlocks. So many, so many kids with with um, rasta hair, and and I got curious. So I asked around why why are so many children marked with these these <laughs> hairstyles, and the story the the answer I got was interesting because people said well. Um, everybody who has the dreadlocks on um, are children of mothers who have lost so many children before they were born. And so the dreadlock is um, it's a local belief that has um, come to stay. And so the belief then is that you mark the children with the dreadlocks and then you mark their faces. Um, oh. Yeah, and, okay, and going back to tradition again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And once that is done, because the the most of these infant mortality, the deaths that do occur, are attributed to to supernatural powers, i.e., witches and all of that. And so, they say, like for example, one woman told me that witches love to see beautiful things. Witches love to see so beautiful if you, if you, people. If you, if you, and if so you if give you look birth, good, and then your baby is looking yeah, exactly. so good and if you fresh. Look, if you look good, then that's the kind of that's the kind of children that witches would always want to kill. Whoa. Uh, and so, yeah, so then you have to be marked with, with, the, with, the, with, with the... Just the baby or the mother? The baby, the baby, yeah. The, the, the mother would just, would just be the one who takes the baby through, through the process. Um, and so it got interesting for me to ask so many questions about why that is the case. And I, I mean, I had no way, no scientific way of knowing whether this belief is right or wrong. But for me, the bigger question was, why are so many children dying? And what is in being done particular town, in, in that particular points. town? And what is being done uh, about, about, about it? And so that is why we went back to tell the story I call Fighting Death. 
So how many uh, Rasta, Rasta babies did you see? I saw in this story, in this particular story, I had interviewed five of them. Um, but there was there were so many of them. There, there were so many of them. You, you. Can't you think it's really... going to become the next Jamaica? <laughs> well, maybe. I mean, I, I, it's not. And the thing is, it's not just a thing that is peculiar to Cape Three Point. Okay. It is a belief that is peculiar. Um, that is widespread among the Fanti people and the Hanta people, and then the Zima people, who okay. are mainly um, located in the south. Um, western coast of the country and so it is not k3 point is just one of the many towns where this happens but being so biased you have to concentrate <laughs> on k3 point yeah i mean you should go to k3 point it's an exciting it's, it's it's a really beautiful um town to be in it it has some of the beautiful beaches i've seen in this country mm -hmm. it, 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 in mm -hmm. fact if you were in k3 point you mm -hmm. could see the what the, the yeah. sea surrounded like all around you. I think you should do a story on that one too. I, we would, we would, we <laughs> definitely would, we definitely would. Yeah. So it was, it was really exciting. Yeah. So some of the parents you spoke. Did you even? Okay. Did you speak with some of the kids, the Rasta kids? Yeah, 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 yeah. I did. And are they aware? For, no, yeah. That's the thing. That most of them are, don't really know what they, what has been done to them until they have come of age and have been told that well, you were born to a mother who had lost. Um, about two, three children before you, and mm -hmm. so this was our way of protecting you. What was um, the most Im interesting thing in Cape Three Point whilst doing this particular story? Um, the 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 most the the thing that I mean it was exciting all along doing the story, but listening to mothers who had lost so many babies, it was it, it was it was it was a bit sad at some point. But the story that really broke my heart was one woman I interviewed. In fact, it was the last interview I had done. Uh, it was the last interview I did. Uh, this woman who, whose fisherman um, husband, had drowned. Yeah. So so yeah. So so she had her, her husband had basically died at sea um, two weeks, and it was just about two weeks that I, I I had gone there to to meet her, and now she was eight months pregnant, and she was basically in sorrow. I mean, weeping over the death of her husband and yet so she also has to think about to that's the thing and, and in 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 some of the vi videos that we didn't show I, I even had to bring out my phone to take selfies with them because most of them they haven't even they hadn't even seen a smartphone before um and it was difficult <laughs> getting them to talk <laughs> but then i just went went close to them sat with them with the with one um one of the rasta kids had gone to the to the house um, to speak with the with the woman, and she said, "Well, I don't want to talk. I don't want to come on TV." And then I had to bring out my phone. We started mm. taking selfies, and they were excited. And then that's how we got talking. And then, well, eventually, they agreed to my interview. But it was really heartbreaking listening to that story. That particular woman. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, it, it, I mean, for for an eight month old pregnant woman who would lose a husband in such tragic conditions it's it's really it's really painful and living in a town where you wouldn't know where if she went into labor at any point in time she 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 wouldn't know where to go because the the clinic in the town doesn't do any deliveries if there isn't anybody to help her at home it would be very difficult for her going through labor okay, and so, so for them it's a life of not knowing what would happen tomorrow. One funny thing, did you leave your smartphone with them? <laughs> I mean, the point, it's, it's, they, it's, it's exciting being with them and have showing them. Did you leave your them. phone with them? No, not at all. I mean, <laughs> the, the phone is what we work with, and so it wouldn't have been well, possible to, to do that. But, yeah, I mean, we, we, that's the thing. When you go into these communities, people have so much... They have high expectations of yeah. you. They want you to give them because they are, they don't have much. Mostly poor. So did you poor. give them something? Of course, of course. But I mean, it's not really anything that will transform their lives. It's just to commensurate with them, and I mean, then I mean, yeah. Smiles, and even wider smiles. These are the lucky ones children who have survived past their fifth birthday. This is the Cape Three Point Primary School. In this town, growing infant mortality means for children like these, 
surviving past age five remains a dream. But people here are finding their own way of fighting death. 35-year-old Awon Yaba lost her first three children before they could turn five. From what she tells me, two of them had shown signs of a fever and the other had diarrhea. Several deaths here are however attributed to witches. Sometimes, witches can kill children. Like my last baby that died, he looked all right until one morning when I just found him lifeless with blood coming out of his mouth. That is how he died. And that is the reason why children here are getting marked with dreadlocked hair and cuts on their faces. The belief is that this makes them scary and witches can't kill them. The dreadlocks mark them. It makes them different. So if you have many children dying, you take them through the religious process to have their hair turned into dread. And no witch can kill a baby if he is marked. But there are serious problems here that means children would keep dying from basic ailments like malaria and cholera. I have come to the Cape Three Point Health Center to find out what is being done to stop these deaths. This health center itself was built free of charge for the Cape Three Points community two years ago. But there are problems here that means no serious medical care could be given here. For one year since it was put up, there were no drugs and no accommodation for staff. The facility is unable to deliver babies, and so expectant mothers would have to make a six-kilometer journey to the nearest hospital. Sometimes when a woman is about to deliver, because the distance is very far and we don't, we don't have deliveries here, sometimes... Uh, they find it a little bit difficult, like maybe sometimes some, th some of them can breathe. It is conditions like this one that is setting even expectant mothers on the edge. In Jamahunu, it's 32 years and eight months pregnant. Two weeks ago, her fisherman husband drowned at sea. Now, she wakes up every day nursing fear she might lose her baby too. If you are pregnant in Cape Three Points, it's a matter of life and death. And God is our helper. Sometimes you don't even have a car to take you to the hospital and you have to be put in a canoe. You might even die before you get to the hospital. Cases of infant mortality in Ghana have largely improved. So as recent as 15 years ago, for example, a hundred children will die out of every thousand before their fifth birthday. Now, that figure has gone down to about 60. But that is even still high because the life of a single child is too much to lose. It is the reason why such beliefs in villages like Cape Three Point give cause for concern. Because they may be right or wrong, but as the fundamental causes of so much death in children in Ghana persist, many expectant mothers would continue to live in fear and so would their newborn babies. Reporting for Joy News, my name is Justice Beidou, Keep the Point. Okay, so from Cape Three Point. Mm. Okay, everything was centered around Cape Three Point. Yes, yes. So, so, from, so there... from Cape Three Point, we so it was basically from one extreme end of the country to another extreme end of the country. So we had we traveled for over eight hundred kilometers from Cape Three Point, and then we went to Bogatanga, hmm. another very beautiful city. Okay, I love that city so much, so much. Um, and then we were in Bogatanga to work on a couple of stories. Um, the, the one that stood out for me was the story we had done from Bongo, um, which, is, which is on the extreme um, 
on the tip, the, the, the northern border with okay. Burkina Faso. And so the community we had gone to, Bongo, is, is just, you can literally just walk over the border into Burkina Faso. Um, yeah, so we had we we were told of a story of because um, in 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 the Upper East region itself is is one of the poorest regions in Ghana, um, with so much opportunity, so much so much opportunities for for growth, and yet because educational standards, educational attainment are not are not high, a lot of um, young people it is difficult for people to realize their full potential, yeah. and a lot of young people, especially girls, are taken down to Kumasi, Accra to engage in hazardous jobs and all of that. So we had been told of um, an initiative that okay. was basically trying to bring back school dropout into the classroom. Into the classroom. And so let's talk about the exciting. journey. Because yeah. it's a bit far yeah. from the south to yeah. the north. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, is, it is really far, Tiring. but it is also one of the exciting parts of our job. Uh, because then you get to meet new people, you travel to new use? places. Um, at the end of the day, you guys get tired. Yeah, yeah. We 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 had to break the journey from 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 Takrade, which is where we travelled um, to Bogatanga. So we had to break the journey at some point around Kintampo and then continue the the day after. Um, yeah, yeah. But we, we used like two days for that journey because it's really uh, it's a, it's a really um, long distance and so yeah yeah we it's, it's a really long distance but it's 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 absolutely worth doing for me i know that's what you love to do so <laughs> obviously you yeah. find joy in it yeah so you when you go when you go to uh, the bongo yeah you go um you're supposed to get tell me about it i'm just interested yeah so so bongo is it's a small um, town. It, it's um, a very quiet district. It's um, especially because of where it is located geographically. There isn't much going on, and people everybody's, my, everybody's money minding his own, his own business. And and in that part of the country, for most part of the year, when there are no rains, there's the when the mainstay of the economy is farming, and the farming isn't going on. So really, people are just not doing anything. Oh, and that increases poverty. Not, I mean, uh, boring, yes, but the bigger problem is that poverty then goes up. And then the other issues, for especially for young people, um, is that they have to come down to bigger cities to engage in Kayaye. Some of them find their ways into child marriages. I mean, so many problems. So we were really excited about this, this project that was um, bringing these young people back into the classroom. And what stood out for me was the story of Abigail, who we had featured as our main um, character in the story, um, who had been taken from Bongo to, um, to Tamale uh, by a family relative. Uh, um, apparently, she was supposed to be taken to school. But in many of these instances, that never happens. And these are the people who would usually be victims of child marriage. Marriages, they would sometimes be victims of teenage pregnancy they and in case of teenage pregnancy the extension then oh, yes, is there was nothing to do so. on safe abortions and all of that so it was exciting and these children are now being taught in their local dialect okay so they they are taking through this nine month course um, which is intensive and then they are then mainstreamed into the so how the many how, how many days did you spend there we were in bongo for okay so we went to bongo back to borga back to bongo so we did that journey like three times because we went there the first time. There was no place to stay. There, 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 there would be, okay, but we were no based. Sleep, yes, yes, we, so yes, we were based to... in Borga. But then, because we were not just working on that story, we were working on a couple of other stories in other parts of the region, and so we had to find ourselves based in a central point where we could easily go um, from one place to the other. So we had to go there for the first time, come back, and then go there again because. Usually when, when we do these stories, we need to go back and then just find out new information, where we would have left out in the first film, and okay. we go and film again. Do If there are more questions to be asked, if there are more interviews to be done, there are more shots to be taken, we go and do all of that. So we had to do that journey again. And it was really exciting meeting all of these young people who are absolutely thrilled about coming back to the classroom and now nursing all of these big dreams of getting back to school, getting their dreams back on track, all this. Um, so this particular girl, Abigail, tells me she wants to be 
a better person in, in, in future, future yeah. be a nurse a teacher um, yeah yeah so it was it was it was really it was really exciting for me and and watching them sing and dance, dancing with them dance, yeah which is what one thing you can never <laughs> help yourself with anytime you are in the north because it's it's almost ingrained in the blood people people it comes out naturally that like they they just they just dance they just love to sing they love to dance and it's beautiful it's watching them do it exactly so when there is nothing and to do you just yeah, sing and dance yeah and and it's 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 one of the it's one of the ways of breaking into people as well because once you engage with them they see you dance talk eat smile that th those are the only ways then they can warm up to you open up and then tell you their story Every day school with different rules, different start and close times, and even a different language of instruction. These are people studying under the comprehensive basic education program, a new project seeking to bring young people left behind by the mainstream school back into the classroom. Through these CBE classes, children who are out of school will access afternoon classes and these are classes that they are going to be taught in the local language that the mother tongue so for the communities that Africa is working with we are using the Grune dialect which is the mother tongue of this place so these children will go through this program for nine months after the nine months they will be transitioned into the former school after which they would have been mainstreamed through the, the former system to continue with education. More than 20,000 children of school-going age are out of school in this region alone. And these are the children who would usually be forced into early marriages or even be sent down to bigger Ghanaian cities for such hazardous jobs as Kayaye. And this is one of the many reasons why Ghana is still struggling to keep children in school, even though enrollment figures are constantly high. This is Abigail. She's 14 years and lives in Bongo Fio. She fell out of school five years ago. Abigail had been taken from her village in Bongo on the promise of being taken to school in Tamale in northern Ghana. That did not happen. And like many young girls forcibly taken from their homes in this part of the country, she was brought back to Bongo, faced with a bleak future. I was in class too before I stopped schooling. I was sent to babysit my elder sister's baby. It would not have been easy for me to start from where I left off, so I decided to join the afternoon school. I used to babysit the woman's baby and wash clothes while the woman's children went to school. Abigail's story runs through that of many children in this class today. But now, they are rewriting that narrative of deferred dreams with lessons in their local Gurone language. When I joined the afternoon school at first, I could not read. Now I can read a little and understand a bit of English. I know one day I will be someone. Some of my elder sisters have become teachers and nurses. I hope to be like them someday. The first batch, they are, they, it's simple for them when uh, they enroll in the regular school. Uh, a lot of them can able to read and then write very well, even better than those who are guests uh, enrolled straight to normal school. Uh, so it really helped them a lot. Myself, I don't even know that I can also uh, teach some people and they will also get knowledge and skills. So I'm very proud that I'm also helping my youngest ones so that they can also learn. With over 5,000 children currently studying under this program in the Upper East region alone, the story of school dropouts in Ghana's most deprived regions would certainly not be the same. Justice Beidou, Joy News, Bongo.
<laughs> so now two of the stories are out. Yeah. So we're waiting for the third and the fourth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 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 yeah. So we 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 did a, couple, a lot of um, stories. Um, but as 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 time as goes the, on, yeah, we'll get to know. We'll be, we'll be rolling all of them out. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It was nice Patricia. having your reporters blog once again. Always I know, nice to be yeah, here. Yeah, as I said earlier, <laughs> I said I said it on the first day you, you came on the show. We're going to be having more of him because he mm. goes out to do all those interesting and nine stories. I know you'll be going back to Cape Three Points. Ah, hopefully. I wouldn't be surprised when you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll not be surprised when you go back to Cape Three Points. Definitely. Yeah. But that bias may change. You, change it. you need to go to other places too. And that was my colleague, Justice Beidou. My name is Patricia Gasu, and the program has been Reporters Blog. Thank you so much for being my guest. Have a blessed day.